there is no better way to close out a season than with a great call to action. To make a better world, it takes action. Our guest today is Desh Amila, and we talk about his fantastic documentaries. Now, more than ever, we need courageous men and women to stand up. We need people to talk. We need communication. Our world can feel like it's falling apart around us. But all it takes is for people to educate themselves. With the great documentaries that Desh and his team put together, they illustrate how important it really is to remember history. And more important, how to challenge yourself to understand what is truth. Let's not waste any more time and get into this great episode to finish off this fabulous season. And I can't wait for next season. Let's get into this. Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be around this wild, wacky, and sometimes disturbing world of ours. Yes, that's the intro to the Mindset Podcast, a weekly attempt to open eyes and shedding light on what's really going on in the world, all done by ripping apart the media madness that masquerades as news. Join me, Gareth Davis, every Sunday on the Mindset Podcast. You can find the show on all major podcasting services such as iTunes, Stitcher, and so on. Or you can go directly to the main Mindset website. That's www.mindsetcentral.com. Check out the Mindset Podcast. Bring your curiosity, your opinions, and a sense of humor. And remember that some worldviews are stranger than others. To overcome, you must educate. Educate not only yourself, but educate anyone seeking to learn. We are all dead America. We can all learn something. To learn, we must challenge what we already understand. The way we do that is through conversation. Sometimes we have conversations with others. However, some of the best conversations happen with ourselves. Reach out and challenge yourself. Let's dive in and learn something right now. Today we have Desh Emilio with us. He is a documentary filmmaker and he is a passionate advocate for change. Desh, could you please introduce yourself and let people know just a little bit about who you are and how you got to where you are today? Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I am, as you mentioned, a documentary filmmaker. I'm also an entrepreneur and uh, I migrated to, I'm based in Australia. I migrated to Australia um, just over 20 years ago um, from a country called Sri Lanka. Uh, some of your listeners may know the country. Um, uh, my journey um, has largely shaped um, uh, during my time in Sri Lanka, which was um, 1981, my birth year was the beginning of a civil war. So I've only known my country as a country of civil war, which lasted 28 years. Um, so I've moved to Australia in about 2000. And uh, since then I have been involved in various number of things. My, my education um, was in filmmaking, but um, around um, 2010, I started getting involved with um, intellectual uh, events, 
Um, so I've been running events for a very long time, and I had the luxury of working with some of the greatest minds in the world. Um, and it's always been my dream eventually to start making films. Um, in 2019, early 2019, late 2018, I released my first film, Islam and the Future of Tolerance, uh, featuring Sam Harris and Majid Nawaz. Uh, and uh, I have made a new movie called Better Left Unsaid, which is scheduled to come out uh, in March this year. Well, both of those are very good documentaries, and I highly recommend people getting over and watching those because they explain a lot. History, people forget history a lot, and you bring up a lot of this brutality that's happened over the history of our nation, especially as the United States. In this recent documentary you did, you point out America's roots kind of were born out of this socialism nature due to Jamestown. Now, we all know about the Mayflower Compact, but a lot of people don't get into that aggregate of what really happened there. Could you let us know a little bit more about why you went that far back to bring up what we are going through today? Well, it's important uh, to understand context, whatever we are speaking about. Um, and you know, the purpose of the movie is to, is to examine uh, some of the now rather mainstream popular ideas um, from the furthest of the political left. Um, and they've you know, really become uh, so popular because you know, um, entertainers, um, politicians are spousing these ideas as these are new, fantastic ideas. Um, when it's presented without the historical context, they do sound like amazing ideas. Now, this is coming from somebody who considers politically on the center left. So it was important for us to go as far back as possible, um, both from a philosophical point of view in the sense of what philosophical ideas underpin some of these political ideas. You know, we go all the way back to you know, the philosophers of modernism and postmodernism, you know, because at the end of the, the day, we are talking about the future of the Western civilization. And if we do not really dig deep and try to understand the roots, we, are, we will make the same mistake. And that is the main reason we decided to go down the direction we did for this movie. Well, I commend you on the direction you took it. You know, we need that truth. We need that digging deep inside and finding out why things are the way they are. In today's world, we are so polarized that nobody wants to talk anymore. People are afraid to voice their opinion because they might get canceled in the new cancel culture. You really highlight a lot of this going back into the Mao, the Stalin, you know, the Lenin, a lot of people don't really understand history. And if we don't, like you just said, we fall into it. You also stated all groups hold four fundamental truths to be self-evident. Could you go over those with us and let us know why you believe these things? I want to be... Uh clear about one thing, and I think it will be quite important. Um, we set up a, a, another call with the writer of this documentary. See, I'm the producer, and I've come in as an editor as well. So uh, the writing of this, and uh, this is directed by a gentleman called Kurt Jaimungo, um, and he categorized those four uh, truths that you've mentioned. 
I would be doing an absolute injustice trying to break that part down. So I'm going to withhold my commentary on that, um, but I will definitely do uh, make sure I introduce you to Kurt so he can really do justice explaining those four categories. Yeah, I think that is vital to understand, especially today, you know, just to clarify for our listeners, those four fundamental truths are, number one, lens claim, number two, evidentiary claim, number three, separation claim, and number four, call to action. I found that to be very important for people to understand because People do get into this mindset, kind of like uh, we've all heard of the hive mind, and we don't really want to do our own homework. With what your crew and yourself have done, you've really put together some homework that a lot of people should be doing for themselves. How did you put it all together? And how did you even start with a beginning to this? Well, um, with regards to how did this all come about, um, thanks to my first film, Islam and the Future of Tolerance, um, you know, I have managed to reach a certain audience. And in that audience was uh, a first-time filmmaker, Kurt Jaimungo, who reached out to me and said he has an idea for a new documentary and he wanted some advice as I've done it. Uh, so I was giving free advice to Kurt um, who then eventually presented to me uh, a version of the film that he thought uh, we should, uh, I should see. And that was about a, just over a year ago. And when I saw what I saw, I saw the potential of what this movie could be. It was in a very different form so I decided to put my hand up and say, I will produce this and I will edit this. Let's do this together um, because I, I, I could clearly see what was happening around the world. And um, I, again, going back to my first point, um, my origin story, coming from a country that has been through a civil war and seeing one's freedoms being curtailed, seeing uh, hundreds of thousands of people dying, um, just some of those freedoms in the West we take for granted. I mean, I don't, I know lots of people do. It, what people don't realize is how fragile those freedoms are. They, they don't get taken away from you over, overnight, but they get chipped away slowly but surely. So this is something I've been worrying for a little while. So when the movie came to me and I realized how important this could be, and I want to make a claim uh, up front here. There are parts of the movie I actually disagree. Kurt and I, although we made the film together, we disagree on certain parts and we actually have fundamental uh, ideological differences. But that's okay. This is me living what I preach, which is that this problem, political extremism in today's world is such a global problem, we need to address it. And when we do so, we are going to come short at some point, but we need to start the conversation. So that's why i would made this documentary with Kurt where I agree with 80% of the content and I disagree with 20% of the content, but that's okay. We need to have the conversation and the movie will force you to think and present you with uh, ways of thinking that you may have not come across. Yeah, that's the reason for Dead America right there. And that's why I started this. People are not talking. We don't have to agree but we really need to have conversations because conversations, well, it helps us understand
understand people. And if we don't understand and we just assume, that's how those wars start. And here in America, you know, I've been praying and I've been really worried about the aspects of a possible civil war. And people are like gung ho for this. I don't really understand that mindset where they want to start a civil war over things that we have already gone through. Truth is very vital. A lot of people, they can't handle the truth or they don't know how to talk the truth. You talk a lot about the differences on transgender and the differences between politics. I find that to be refreshing that people are actually challenging what people think they already know. I thank you for coming on Dead America and giving us the details about your documentary and what you do. You have come from a country that went through civil war, like you stated. The brutality of that civil war, a lot of people do not recognize. Now, you said that you actually lived through portions of that before you immigrated? Absolutely. I definitely did. Um, you know, I, again, when you're living through that, and if that is the only norm you know, you don't find that to be abnormal. You one has to leave and look back at it from a fresh set of eyes to realize what you lived through is horrendous. You know, I was born um, in, a, in a small town in, in, in Sri Lanka. Um, where I was born uh, was being, uh, the, the civil war broke out, which is primarily in the north of the country, but at the same time, on the south of the country, there was a Maoist rebellion. Uh, so we were squeezed from both sides. My dad had to go into hiding because of his political views. Um, and it, it was absolutely normal for uh, me to, whenever we are going out of the school, uh, to see soldiers with AK-47 walking around, checkpoints that will force us to get out of the bus and hand over a national ID card so the the army could check that you're not a rebel or you're not an LTTE uh, um, a terrorist. So yeah, that's what I grew up with. And I've seen, and my parents did an amazing job of trying to give a, a normal childhood. But, you know, uh, I, I remember seeing in the middle of the road, uh, these burnt tires, um, uh, which is a, a common sight. Um, and what I now know what was in the middle of those burnt tires was a human being and because that was a tactic one of the Maoist rebels in Sri Lanka used to curtail political dissent. So, you know, I, I've heard stories uh, of uh, journalists being abducted. Uh, you know, we, we had a white van syndrome in Sri Lanka where, you know, a, a white van will appear and that's the last time who, uh, somebody has seen somebody and then that, that person's disappeared. You know, there's still, I believe, about 100,000 people uh, who are missing in Sri Lanka. A, 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 this is growing up there, and, and suicide bombs were a, a, a regular occurrence. You know, um, I know a story of a number of uh, students from the, uh, the school I went to um, uh, died because they were in a bus uh, that blew up because of a suicide bomber. So that was normal. And, you know, I remember when I was like year six or seven in the playground, we would talk about how many of ours died versus how many of theirs died. You know, it, it was like a game for us. That shouldn't be one's childhood, but that's what million, and, and my experience is not unique in the sense of you know, millions of kids grew up 
in, in that time in, in my country. And again, it's also not unique to Sri Lanka. There are many other countries that are still going through similar experiences. See, in, there is something to be said about lived experiences. And for me, the gratitude I have for the freedoms I have in the West, you know, whenever I see people in the West try to head down a direction that may end up in, in a civil war, I genuinely do not think they understand what they want. It is a, there are systemic failures in, in many societies, in, in the West, you know, their things could be improved, but as a solution for that, breaking down those systems and calling for revolution, calling for civil war are absolutely and utterly short-sighted. And I, as you put it, like your podcast, the documentaries I make are a reminder to people there are better solutions than breaking down the system. Because, you know, if you look at revolutions, uh, whether it's the recent ones like the Arab Spring, you know, I, I encourage you to look at what happened after the revolution. How many revolutions uh, dawn a utopian perfect or oh, not even perfect, any yeah. semblance of normal reality to those people. It doesn't work. We have a better system. We have uh, democracy. We have an economic system, capitalism, that it has its own shortfalls, but it is a system that we can mold and shape to continue to have uh, the abundance we already have. You know, it's, it's, it's extraordinary for me to even comprehend when people call for things like civil war. They do not know what they ask for. It's just, it is not an answer to any of the questions and issues you have. Yeah, I agree 100%. It's brutal. You know, and a lot of people, they say, well, that can never happen here in America, but it already has. And it's because of the indifferences. So communication and diplomacy is the way we see through these things. The beauty of our system is it's a constitutional form of government. And outlined inside the document itself gives us the ways to ensure the safety of the union. And a lot of people go on social media nowadays, they get sound bites, and then they become an expert on it instead of, like we said earlier, digging into the aggregate of the issue and finding out what is really going on. It's important, like you said, for these documentaries, podcasts, any form of communication to get reality back into our mindset. With, with the onset of the internet, I have noticed there's been a decline in people actually doing their own studies, especially when it comes to political issues. How do we fix that? Do you have any idea, Dash? Well, um, this, is, this is a very uh, complex situation. Um, and I urge anyone to run away from anyone who's giving simple answers to that, because it isn't simple. We're going through an extraordinary time in human history where we have this incredibly powerful tool, social media. You know, not so long ago, this was a tool uh, that was used to spawn revolutions. It was considered, like again, I mentioned Arab Spring, right? It was primarily organized and run thanks to social media. Now, the same, what people didn't realize, the flip side of the same coin, it, you can use the same tool to divide and utterly decimate society, and it is happening. So what the solution needs to be is we need to really look into the power of this system and understand the motivations of this system. We have 
come up with ways to regulate almost every industry. You know, when uh, the seatbelt was introduced to cars, lots of people didn't like the idea. But now you would be hard pressed to find somebody who would think seat belts are somehow curtailing your freedom. You know, it's still you, you can still drive around, but you just have to put a seat belt because it is 100% safe. So I think we are going through that now. Um, I think regula regulators are looking at ways to regulate these social media platforms because at the end of the day, the artificial intelligence, the AI, the algorithms that are made to govern these uh, social media platforms have one real objective. It is people's attention, thus selling advertising. Uh, they have a mode that is built into the system that is there to, uh, you know, it, it is corruptible. So how do we govern that? There is no simple way to do it. Many places, I mean, European Union have come up with a number of guidelines, and I know here in uh, uh, my country in Australia now, they are looking at ways to uh, put new guidelines in place, both uh, with Facebook and also Google. And, you know, Google recently threatened that they will leave Australia. They will block Google to Australians if, if these new guidelines come into place. I mean, you know, uh, that's what, what they need to understand is, you know, sure, they can go. Somebody will replace them. I saw an article yesterday, Microsoft is already having conversations with the Australian government, how to replace that void if they actually leave. So, you know, we have a market-driven economy. So, you know, those threats shouldn't be taken uh, as, as gospel. Like that's, that's not the way. I think it is important we all start looking at ways to figure out how these systems can continue to foster human progress, not curtail it which means we will need to make some hard calls. And I know that we will. It is going to take some time. But here's the other thing, though. If you look at the success of the, like a podcast like yours and large podcasts and platforms uh, where long, detailed conversations are gaining an audience because most people are intelligent, they really see the there is something wrong right now. The problem is in what, what I, one of the things I'm talking about in the film is a vocal minority with who has politically extreme views knows how to get attention. Whether it's the furthest of the left or the furthest of the right, they know how to get attention and they have a machine that will amplify their attention seeking antics which is the social which is social media and now uh, more and more mainstream media who amplify what is trending on social media but there is this large group of people who are in the center whether it's the center left or center right they don't you know we don't normally make too much noise we just consume and we just get information but the good news is i think it just already started People already start seeing things and, you know, people are consuming more information. And I uh, consider, you know, consider me an optimist here, but I do see things more and more people as they get access to more information, whether it's through documentaries, through long form podcasts, I think people will start making better decisions. But what is crucial in these times is we need to continue to have difficult but important conversations grounded in some uh, objective truth and respecting people but challenging their ideas if we disagree with them, you know, appealing to our common humanity. Um, and I, with that, I think overall, we will, we must make uh, changes so we can continue to have, you know, a better world. Yeah, there is a war on science. You know, we really have to base our claims on something. And science is that 
form that we use more often than any. We've used music and other forms, film, podcasts, but we really have to be able to base what we know on something tangible that everybody can agree upon. And the best that we know is science. And when politicians start calling scientists out without even having the intellectual foresight, you have to really begin to wonder. I know science is not always perfect, but it's something that we have that we can start a basis on. I find it very important. How can we actually help you with your projects and how can people find you, get involved with you? Um, with regards to the comments on science, I 100% agree. I think you know, I, I recognize this almost a decade ago. Science has a PR problem because yeah. um, what people don't, um, more and more, uh, the people who attack science don't understand what they're really attacking. You know, science is, it, it, it cannot take a political stance. People use scientific the data to make political assertions, but science as a way of uh, operating, you know, it's, it's quite simply a process. It cannot take a side. It, you know, it doesn't need to prove itself to anybody other than, uh, you know, the, the, the field of study itself, really. And it, when you don't understand you know, what you mean by science, you tend to make bad judgment calls, how climate change, how vaccination, how, you know, simple things like mask wearing have become political issues is because you know, scientists haven't done a good job of uh, explaining that what they are studying and uh, ideological politicians, both on the left and the right, have taken certain things based on science um, and turn it into something that shouldn't have been. Um, and that then continues to, uh, you know, people tend to look at certain scientific realities through a lens of politics, which is a recipe for disaster. So I've, I've made it my life mission to popularize rational thinking intelligent thinking. My whole thing is making being intelligent cool. You know, I want to appeal to a generation uh, and I want to do things, uh, you know, for, for over, well over 10 years, I was touring intellectual thinkers in Australia and New Zealand and putting them in massive venues, uh, organizing those events very much like a music concert, uh, because I wanted to popularize intellectual thinking. I think we all have a responsibility when we talk about science and scientists to uh, make sure we normalize those conversations. And we shouldn't uh, be you know, we shouldn't let scientists or you know, academic or intellectual thinking to be an elitist one thing why only one group of people are allowed to that set of information which which there, there's some truth to that you know um, my dealings with universities have been painful for the longest time when i was doing what i was doing because they feel as they have a right to do what they do and nobody else has that which is which is problematic and i think what you're doing with your podcast is you know giving people access to objective truth-based information so they can make up their own mind. Now, how to help me? You know, I think it is important. It's based on like a self-serving statement, but I do think uh, documentaries like mine um, and, you know, I, I produce a number of podcasts. People should, if it interests you, you should consume the content and then help 
this content get in front of other people. And so I'm absolutely grateful you even take the time to talk to somebody like me. Uh, you know, this is an independent film because institutions would not take uh, subjects like this. And that's generally been uh, everything I do. You know, most of my events that I've organized, I never had sponsors because large corporations, government institutes thought it was too controversial. But I thought it was too important not to talk about these things. So the best thing you can do, please, when the movie's out, better left unsaid, uh, you know, go watch it, share it, tell people about it. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, it's just Desha Miller. Um, I'm very easy to find. And you know, the film is at betterleftunsaidfilm.com. Uh, so yeah, that I think it's important. If you find something important, um, as you said, do some research, but uh, use the tools we have, social media, to uh, tell others about it. Now, with that statement, you know that it's a double-edged sword because you know this is how misinformation also spreads. But if we make enough noise with what we are doing, I think we can counter some of the narratives that's grounded in misinformation. Yeah, I agree 100%. What you're doing is very important. We've got a lot of big money players, whether it be from Hollywood, corporations, politicians, they're everywhere and they want the pie for themselves. We need to have people like you out there that can actually take the time and they have the knowledge to dig up the facts and the truth and present them in a logical fashion because we don't have news stations anymore that we rely on. There's so many people that just don't trust the media anymore. What you're doing is important. We need that logic. We need that firm stance that, hey, I'm not standing with the left or the right. I want to be right here in the middle. I want to be right, regardless of the political outcome or the financial outcome. Truth, logic, and being right, that's what matters in the world. If you go over to the Better Left Unsaid website, you have an area where you can actually donate to this film. I want my listeners to donate what they can. And anybody listening to this, reach out to Dash. Very logical, solid person. I want to thank you for coming on to the podcast and sharing with us, Dash. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me and appreciate you help me, helping me get the message out about Better Left Unsaid. Thank you so much. Okay. You have a good day. You too, mate. Take care. All right. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this podcast enlightening, entertaining, educational in any way, Please share, like, subscribe, and join us right back here next week for another great episode of Dead America Podcast. I'm Ed Waters, your host. Enjoy your afternoon, wherever you may be.